We are the chosen generation. Call for the show this excellence. All I require in life, God has given me, cause I know who I am. We are the chosen generation. Call for the show this excellence. All I require for life, God is giving me. Cause I, good morning. I know who I say I am, what he says I am, where he says I'm at. I know who I am. I know who God says I am, where he says I am. Good morning. Good morning. Working in power. I'm working miracles. I live my life a favor, cause I know who I am. Good morning, Deborah. Good morning, Andrea. How are you? Good morning, Cousin Sandy. I'm rocking this morning to Sinaj. She is from, I think she's from South Africa. If you've never heard her album, you need to get it. She has several, but she's amazing. And I, I just love jamming to her. I know who God says I am what he says I am, where he says I'm at. I love it. So good morning, good morning. I just invited some friends. Welcome, welcome to day three. Come on in, have a seat. If you're driving in your car, I hope you're rocking with me this morning. If you're not, if you're laying in your bed, I hope you can feel the spirit of God around you this morning as we praise him. Yay, 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 yay. Share this broadcast out because what I have for you this morning is great. It's great. It's great. I'm so excited. Good morning, Diane. Good morning, Melmar. How are you this morning? Good morning, Nadine. I'm so excited to see you guys. Come on. Come on in. Come on in. Join me. Have some fun with me this morning as we take you on day three of this devotion and this journal journey with me. And let me tell you, next week, I got some great stuff coming up for you. I tell you, stick with me and your life won't change. The only way it doesn't change is if you don't want to change it. But stick with me because what God has downloaded into me for you guys for this month is amazing. And he's popping in and he's showing me stuff that's, that um, is proving to me that he is in this, that he is in this. So let's get let's get at it. Hey, Rose, good morning, good morning. So let me cue the music or stop the music or whatever is the term we use so I could continue. Ooh, no, 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 no. I don't want another song right now. I just want to stop that one. And I don't, hang on. There we go, there we go. Sometimes I don't know how to operate this stuff. But good morning, good morning. So glad you could join me this morning. I'm so excited to see all of you that are joining. Uh, again, share this broadcast out. This is day three. Happy January the 3rd, 2020. 2020, as I said on Monday, is now being dubbed as the year of the plant-based, international plant-based year, right? And it's also been dubbed the year of visions. So what I really want you to do is to keep writing because pretty soon we're going to talk about your vision and what you want to manifest, what you want to activate, and we're going to um, get there together, right? If you have not yet started. So if you're just joining me for the first time this morning, I haven't even introduced myself for the last two days. My name is Joan T. Randall. I am a speaker, author, coach, and my purpose is to impact the lives of women that are faith-based to change their outcomes for positive, right? So they can live in their God-given purpose and walk in it dominate in it and be successful at it. So that is what I am purpose to do. And I'm excited to have you here with me this morning. Good morning, Amy. How are you? Great, great morning, Annette. Great to see you. Good morning, Rose. Thank you so much for jumping on with me this morning. Good morning, Pastor Juanita. I'm so excited to see you. Good morning, Niket Perry. Good morning, good morning. It is so nice to see you guys. So yesterday we talked about, um, you had a homework yesterday if you were on with me, and you needed to write in your journal, what do I love about me? What do I love about me? And I'm hoping I can have some volunteer this morning 
type in what it is they wrote about themselves that they love about themselves because so often when we look at ourselves in the mirror me we may not see a picture of perfection and perfection cannot be attained or achieved because we are not god right so we are humans and we are not perfect but i want you to love everything you are and if there are things that um, you possess or their skill set or character traits that you have that you really don't like then the only person that can make a difference or change those is you but I want you to dig deep and find the thing that you love most about you day one the question was who am I and I wanted you to take an internal look of who you are at the core of your being Day two, my question to you was, what do I love about me? I am going somewhere with these days and these questions that I'm asking you. So if you want to be on this journal journey with me, I want you to come with me and I want you to do the work. See, that's the thing with God. God will align you with the people that can help you get to where you want to go. But you have to do some work. You can't sit there and be lazy. You can't get an instruction and not do it. That's why it says, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be open. So what God is saying to you is that I am giving you what you need. I'm giving you what you're praying for. I'm giving you what you're asking me for. But there is some work involved. There is some action that needs to be taken. And so you can't get to what you want. You can't get exactly what you want from God unless you put some action in. So you can sit on the bed and listen to me ask you or give you some directions to help you, but do nothing. You listen and it goes one ear and come up. You will not be able to get where you want to go if directions are being given to you to activate and manifest that which you have on the inside and you don't do it. Right, so I'm hoping that if you have been watching me and if you are committed to being on this journey with me, that you're going to put some level of effort in it, some work in it. You can't just sit there and watch and then you're not putting the effort in, right? That is laziness, that is procrastination, that is I don't care, right? And I would rather you care enough because if you can wake up with me at 7.30 in the mornings, I know you care. I know deep down you care. So put the work in so that at the end of this 31 day journey that we can start to see um, some progression, some progress, because we, I want you to win. I want you to win. I want you to follow me on my journey. I want to share my journey with you. I never got here because I didn't put the work in. There was sweat and there were tears and there were times when I felt like giving up, but I kept going. I kept going. I kept showing up. I kept showing up. I was committed and I was consistent. Even when I didn't have the followers, I was showing up. Even when there were three people watching me online, I was showing up. Even when there was nobody, crickets, I was showing up. There were times when I did Facebook Live that nobody jumped on. I still showed up. I never stopped showing up and I won't stop showing up because I am purposed to do something that God has called me to do. And unless I put the work in, unless I put the effort in, I will not see the reward, right? I will not see the reward. I worked for 25 years in corporate America. I got up every day and I went to go work for a man. Every day for 25 years, I got up and I put all my efforts in that job. I started as a part-time associate and I climbed the ladder all the way up to a vice president because I put the work in. If I can put the work in for a man who my creator created, then why can't I put the work in for the directions that my creator gives to me? You see what I'm saying? So as you're following me on this journey, I want you to put some actions into what I'm asking or what I'm suggesting you to do, right? So let me go ahead and talk about, let me see if there anybody who is brave enough to write what they love most about themselves. And I'm going to share a little bit with mine and then we're going to get into the words, right? Good morning, Carolyn Maloney. How are you this morning? It is great to see you. Um, hi, Violet. Good morning. Good morning. Angela Hope. So glad you could join me. Amy Steele. Good morning. My favorite politician. 
I love you, girl. Um, Lisa Renee, good morning. Thank you so much for joining me. And I see some responses. So I'm going to go ahead and go back up to my cousin. My cousin Sandy D.L. Thompson says, I love being different and authentic in who God created me to be. And so this is what I want you to do. I like how you say, I love being different, right? I want you to put some words where different is. Different is broad. Different is vague. When we're trying to love ourselves, I want us to get down to the specifics. What do I love about being different? I know my cousin. She's an empath. She feels what other people is going through. She can feel it from miles away. She don't even have to be around you. She can have a conversation on the phone with you and she could feel everything you're feeling. She's incredible, <laughs> by the way, right? So I want you to write that, Sandy. I want you to say, I am an empath. I feel what other people feel. And she has to protect herself because she'll take on everything that someone is feeling, bad or good right? And I am authentic in who God created me to be. That is correct. I love that. All right. Latasha says, I am persistent and determined. I love it. I am persistent and determined. Now, Latasha, I want you to be persistent in 2020 and get after what you know you are purposed to do. Because remember, when we ask about who am I? There was something that you said that you could work on. So I want you to take that persistence and that determination and put it into what you are purposed to do, right? This is the journey that we are on, right? I love it. Um, let me see. I love that I'm determined and persistent in reaching my goals. Okay, perfect. In reaching your personal goals. You have another goal, Latasha, that I want you to reach too, right? Um, Melmar said, yes, in order to succeed, you must put the work in. Absolutely, you cannot be successful without putting the work in. Carolyn Maloney, this lady, this lady has a story that is just absolutely mind-boggling. And I cannot wait to see Carolyn finally share her story with the world. Carolyn, I'm rooting for you in 2020. Carolyn says, I love that I care about people. Absolutely. Caring and loving people is like the first commandment. Love others as you would love yourself, right? That's like the ultimate commandment and gifts of love. Violet says, I love my ability to make people smile. Absolutely, she makes me smile. Violet is the creator of my custom candles. And if you walk into my house and smell it, it's absolutely beautiful. And Violet is just an incredible individual. She calls me her spirit animal. animal and I feel honored that she thinks that I'm her spirit animal. animal and I am happy. All right, I love Violet. Yes, she really has the ability to make people smile. Good morning, Ty Jones. It's great to see you. Mel Mar says, I'm determined, faithful, and I am loyal. Beautiful. I love that you're determined. What I'm <clears throat> trying to get you to do is what you love about yourself to start using that into your purpose. That's what I want you to do. Start using that into your purpose so you can impact the lives that God has called you to impact, right? So what you love about you is the best of who you are. The best of who you are is also being in a position to impact lives in some way, shape, or form. Good morning, Weldon Wendell, my cousin. Good morning. Great to see you. Um, Joseph, pastor, how are you? Great to see you. I can't wait for you to be with me at my conference in March. Alicia, good morning, my love. It is so great to see you. Thank you so much for joining. Angela Michelle says, I love my heart and the love I give others. Beautiful. I love that. I love my heart and the love I give to others. Keep writing. Keep writing. All right. So here is what I wrote for myself because I'm not going to give you the work and then I don't do them either, right? So this is what I love about Joan, Joan T. Randall, Joan Thaxter, this girl, this is who I love about me. I love my personality. I have a bigger than life personality. You cannot look at me and tell at any point in time that I am down or that I'm suffering or that I'm going through something. That may not always be good, but that's the gift that God gave me. God, my gift is my, per well, 
I realize I have more gifts than I thought I did. But one of my gifts is my personality. I will walk into a room and I will light up a room with my smile and my attitude. With my smile and my attitude. I walk into the room and my attitude allow the atmosphere to change. That is what I love about me. Because if I walk in a room and people have, I would just say, hey, good morning. How are you? And I don't care how you look mean or anything. I'm going to give you a hug. I'm going to touch you. I'm going to high five you. I'm going to dap you. And the personality, the room, the atmosphere changes. That is what I love most about me. I love that I'm a risk taker. Have you ever heard about somebody who loves taking risks? That is me. I live for taking risk. There is nothing that comes into my mind that I feel like God gave me to do that I don't do. Nothing. I will jump up in a heartbeat and leave. I will get up and move. I will move. I've lived in six states in the United States because I don't feel like I'm rooted to any particular state for any particular reason. No way. I moved from Jamaica to Philadelphia, to New Jersey, from New Jersey to Miami, from Miami to Washington, D.C., from Washington, D.C. to North Carolina. And listen, if tomorrow my husband said, let's go to Texas, I am ready. I'm a risk taker. I do things that I think about and just to see if I can make it happen. Just to see if I'm, so I love that I'm a risk taker. I love that I am meticulous about my body, my hygiene, my teeth. I love that. I think I'm, the, I may be the only person that goes to the dentist three times a year. I love the dentist. Ridiculous, but that's just me. I love the, and I still have all my teeth. I still have all my teeth. One wisdom tooth never grow in. So I have 31 teeth still till this day. I still have my wisdom, the three wisdom to one never, just never came. I love that I'm meticulous about my hygiene, my body, my teeth, right? I love that I can just get up and go. I said that already. And I love that I strive to elevate others. I love it. I will support you. I will pump you up. If you say, Joan, I need help in this, I will help you. That's what I love about me. And so I can get up every morning at 7.30, even when I'm sleepy, and be excited because I want to help you win, all right? So let's get into the word. So let me see if there was anybody else that says anything. Um, Juanita Corey Jackson is like me. I'm a risk taker. Amen. Alicia says, oh, I said good morning already. All right. Um, Violet said, yes, you do, Joan. Absolutely. Good morning, Hope Dea Jennings. Hope says, I am an encourager. I can break down difficult information so that people can understand what, girl, come through with that. Yes, ma'am. And I hope that you are using that as a purpose pusher. I hope that you are helping people realize their purpose with that, with that, that gift, that talent that you have. Because see what you don't realize? Here's what I, you don't realize, that the thing that you love most about yourself is your gifting. Hallelujah. The thing that you love most about yourself is your gifting. Come through, all right? So uh, my cousin said, I love being an empath. I have the ability. Yes, 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 it. See, that's why I need you to get to specific, right? Angela Hope said, I love that God called me to be a prayer intercessor. Listen, if you ever um, in a position to connect with Angela Hope. Angela Hope has a company called A Hope and Company. She does amazing things for people. And I'm telling you, she will stand in the gap and pray for you. She's an amazing, an amazing lady. A Hope and Company, watch out for 2020. A Hope and Company is gonna provide services for entrepreneurs to be able to do what they have to do and not have to worry about the administrative things and the things that, you know, busy work. So that's what Angela's company is going to be providing for you. Annette says, I love my compassionate self, always willing to help, but I know, I now know I have to look out for the takers. I love my go get it spirit and my optimism, even in the face of dire circumstances. Awesome. Awesome. Um, Sandy said, you have very pretty teeth. <laughs> I do. I'm not, I'm not being vain. I just do. Yeah, see? Ah, it's all there. 
Um, and then that was gross. I'm sorry. And then Venice Cora says, um, Cora, good morning. Thank you for joining. All right. So let's get to it. So here is my scripture this morning. The first one. Remember, I tell you, I am in this, this um, Proverbs. Listen, Proverbs is the book of wisdom. It is the book of wisdom. You want to change your life. You want to go where God is showing you. Get into Proverbs. And if you read it and you don't understand it, go to Google. Trust me. Here's a tip. Go to Google and just type into Google. Explanation of Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. That's all you got to do. There's a ton of expositions and explanation that comes up about what it means. That is how you start to understand what some of this, and a lot of times we read one verse, but the one verse is connected to the verse above and the verse below. So, so often we take that one scripture, one verse, and we, you know, shout and holler about the one verse. A lot of times that one verse does not stand on its own. There is accompanying verses that really tells the whole picture to that one verse. So listen to this, right? So I'm in Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 22. If you can write, write that down. If not, that's fine. Plans fail when there is no counsel, but with many advisors, they succeed. Plans fail when there is no counsel, but will me, but with many advisors, they would succeed. So this is Solomon writing this. This is in the Old Testament. But let me give you a verse in the New Testament that was saying the same thing that Solomon said to the, in the Old Testament. And this is taken from Luke 14 and verse 28. It says many, okay, Luke 14 verse 28 says, Hold on a second. I got it right here. Let me get into the Bible and read it. This is what it says. For which of you wanting to build a tower doesn't first sit down and calculate the cost to see if he has enough to complete it? Here's what verse 29 says. Otherwise, after he has laid the foundation and cannot finish it, all the onlookers will begin to ridicule him. Does that make sense? All right, let me tell you a story. So I'm from Jamaica, Portland, Jamaica, right? Well, I was born in Kingston, and when I was 12 years old, my dad moved to Portland. So I call my, I, call, I consider myself a Portlander. There was this man that led, came from the U.S. and went to Portland, and there was this beautiful, it's like a connection of the island, right? It's, it's, uh, connected to the island, but it's like an island on its own. It's kind of connected to, to the island, to the um, the district of Portland, but it's kind of on its own, right? And he loved it. It was beautiful. You know, Jamaica is surrounded by the Caribbean Sea, and this little piece of island was also surrounded three quarters of the way by water. But he's so in love with his wife that he decided he was going to build this mansion, this mansion on this little piece of island for his wife. And so he just got the, um, you know, the people, the contractors and start building and they build and they build and they're building this mansion. Halfway into building the mansion, guess what? They realize the foundation was made of sand. The foundation was sand. So guess what? The project has to stop. They could not finish the house because the foundation was not strong enough for a castle. And until this day, that building still sits on this little piece of island in Portland. And guess what it's called? Folly. F-O-L-L-Y. Why? Because only a foolish person would build their house on a sand without seeking wise counsel to find out, can I build a mansion on this land? Is it firm enough? Is it strong enough? Can I really do this? Well, it's the same thing as if we are saying, to, I'm saying to you this morning, 
right? None of us has in ourselves sufficient power to do what it is that God has called us to do. We don't have it all. And that's why sometimes we never get started. And that's why sometimes we fail. But we have to seek wise counsel. We have to first inquire from God and say, God, give me, show me the way, show me the instructions. And then when God shows you what he wants you to do, then you start getting others that are subject matter experts to assist you. All this is saying is that nothing that you do, you can do it without first finding out if and how you're going to be able to win. You've got to got all the, you have to have all the resources to help you get it from idea to implementation, right? Idea to implementation, vision to fruition, the thought, right? The idea to making it real. So there's a whole process in what it is that God has called you to do in anything that you do. And that's why it is so important to write because what I'm saying to you to write in your journal, I'm telling you that as you get, that as you get these ideas and as you have these plans and these dreams, these visions, these goals, you've got to write it and then you've got to build on how do I make this come true? How do I make this happen? And as I said to you before, that Proverbs is a book of wisdom. And Solomon is saying to you, plans are going to fail. It's going to fail when there is no support. There is no structure. When there is nothing to back it up, when you don't do your research, when you don't ask, that when you don't seek, when you don't knock, when you don't try to get a coach, when you don't try to find somebody who is an expert in the field, you can't do it on your own. That is the bottom line. You can't do it alone. You can't do it by yourself right? You cannot decide that you have this piece of land and you want to build a house and then you just walk out to the land and you just start building, putting bricks and stone and you will fail if you don't have a blueprint. You will fail at building that house if you don't have a blueprint. What is your blueprint this morning? What is your blueprint for your life? What is that blueprint for your life? The blueprint means that you have to write it down. It means that you have to figure out how you're going to be able to achieve certain things. And who are the people that are going to help you get there? When Jesus began his ministry, he knew he could not do it alone. He knew he had to go get some men. And when he went and got Peter, Peter go get his brother James. And then the next thing you know, they get John. And before you know it, Jesus had a tribe of men with all different kind of expertise. A lawyer, a doctor, a fisherman, a nobody, a somebody. And I don't mean to say a nobody, but a fisherman like Peter that was angry and aggressive and rough and tumble and he will cut off a man's ears and he will just like do all kind of stuff. But that was Peter's personality. And he became one of Jesus's closest disciple. But Jesus had lawyer, right? And then he had a, 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 um, a doctor. So he had men of all different type of personality and expertise around him. That is being smart. That is, he built a blueprint for his ministry. You hear what I'm saying? And even in his blueprint, there was someone in his armor, you know, among his crew that he knew was a fake. He knew he was a fake, but guess what? That fake needed to fulfill the promises of God. Judas was necessary. 
Judas was necessary because he had a purpose. He had a role the same way Peter had a role. Judas had a role as well, right? So what is the blueprint of your life? What does it look like? If you're sitting here, you may be in your 40s. You may be in your 30s or 20s. You may even be in your 50s and 60s. What is that blueprint for your life? What is the legacy you want to leave? What does that look like? Don't wait to start creating that blueprint for your life. We're in 2020. It's a new decade. The entire 10s, 2010 to 2019. Did you have a blueprint for your life? And were you able to accomplish what you set out on your blueprint? Was life so tumultuous that all you were trying to do was survive? Were you intentional about that blueprint? Well, let me share this with you. I am here this morning talking to you, all of you. I am here this morning. Good morning, Fabi. Good morning, Carleen Archer. I'm here this morning talking to all of you that's on with me. Carolyn, Sandy, Melmar, Angela, Annette, Alicia, Carlene, Angela Hope, I mean, Fabi Pressler, uh, Cora. I am here this morning asking you, do you have a blueprint for your life? What does that look like? Have you had a blueprint, but you're so afraid of stepping out on faith and doing it that you're sitting and all of that stuff is locked up inside of you, not even activated as yet? Do you feel frustrated that you're at the age that you are at right now, listening to me, knowing full well that everything you've ever wanted to do is still bottled up on the inside? Does it make you overwhelmed? Does it make you feel sad that, you know, I'm 30, I'm 40, I'm 50, I'm 60, and I've wanted to write a book for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, but I'm afraid of what the book might do to my family. I'm afraid that if I write this book, I'm going to get criticized. I'm afraid that if I write this book, people won't talk to me anymore. I'm afraid that if I write this book, I'm exposing my vulnerability and I'm exposing my pain and I don't want people to know what I've been through in life. Your story is nothing to be ashamed of. Your story is nothing to be ashamed of. You're here today. You've survived your story because God built you strong enough to survive it. And what he wants you to do is to use your story to help others who may be in that same position that you were in when you experienced your adversity. Your story is your platform to stand on, to show what God has done for you. Don't be ashamed of your story. And it may not be a book that you want to write. It may be a chance where life took over and you became a mother and a wife at a young age. And so you never got to finish school. You never got an opportunity to finish and get that degree. And here you are, an empty nester. Your kids are gone or grown up. Can I really go back to school? Yes, you can. Create that blueprint for your life. Create it. So today, here is what I want to leave you with this morning, right? You know how every day I've asked you to do something? Day one was to write, who am I? Day two was to write, what I love about me. Guess what day three is going to be? Let me find it because I told you. I've been writing these down. I tell you. I write everything. I write everything. Here is day three. What are my dreams and my goals? That's what I want you to write. And even if they look far-fetched, even if they look like you can't reach it, that's what I want you to write. And I don't care if it takes up two pages or three pages. I want you to write, what is your dreams and your goal? What is on your heart? What do you want to do? What do you want to accomplish? Write it down. Put it on paper. Write the vision. Make it plain. God wants you to write. 
those things that he placed on the inside. Because all of the things that you want to do, that you want to accomplish, God is the, the one who's giving you the promptings. And you can do it. And God is a way of making stuff happen that you don't, uh, the only thing you can say is my God, but God. Yesterday, I had an experience, great experience, and it's only by God's grace why that happened. There is no other explanation. And God has been blowing my mind like that for the last two years. Yeah, since 2017. God has been blowing my mind. And I'm like, there is no other explanation. There is no other way to explain my experience yesterday in the presence of my husband. Amazing. Unbelievable. And I told my sister and she said, oh, you need to stop saying amazing, unbelievable because God has been showing you himself a lot recently. And that is the truth. That is the truth. That is the truth. So um, I'm going to pray for you um, and then let you go. Um, Angela says, Angela Mitchell says, you were talking to me this morning. I needed this word today. God yes, Angela, I felt that. Oh, my God. That, Angela, what I just read right now, touched the inside of my soul. That's what those words that you wrote just did to me. I felt it in the deepest part of my soul. Yes, it is for you. This word is for you. Good morning, Hillette. How are you? My cousin Sandy, who's always typing for me, I so love her. I so appreciate her. What are my dreams and my goals? That's what I want you to write for day three. God, I give your name glory and honor and praise. I stand before you this morning as your liaison, as your intercessor, as the person that is bringing your words as best as I can, Lord, as best as I know how to your children. I may not have all the fancy lingo, Father God. I may not even have the expertise, but Lord, as you give me the words, so I bring them. Thank you. Thank you for choosing me. Thank you, Father God, for allowing me to reach lives via this medium where I could sit in my dining room and have a conversation with people, even as far as Jamaica. I thank you. I do not take it lightly. Father God, this morning I ask you to just protect your children. Everyone that's watching me this morning, Lord, and that's watching this replay, and we'll watch this replay today. Father God, I ask you to give them the prompting in their heart so that they take the instructions that you have directed me to give to them. Father God, I know you want changes in the lives of your children. This is the year, this is the month, Lord, that you have directed me to do this in order for changes to take place in the lives of those who sometimes feel a little lost, who sometimes feel as if, what's next? Father God, give them the courage to activate their faith. Give them, Lord, a renewed mind. Give their heart, Father God, peace and joy and love. And let them realize, Lord, that they're so close to their abundance. All they have to do is ask, seek, and knock. Father God, we give your name glory and honor and praise. And if there's anyone right now, Father God, that's hurting, we ask you to heal that hurt physically, emotionally, psychologically. And Lord Jesus, we ask that we're just going to right now leave all of our burdens at your feet because we're considering it done. We have invite you into our situation, Father God. And so we're asking you, Lord, to just take our burdens from us. Forgive us of all of our sins, Father God. Cleanse us from all those unrighteousness. Search our hearts. 
Search our hearts, O oh Lord. And if there are things, Lord, that does not align with you, we ask you to take it away. Take away the things from us, our thoughts, Father God, that sometimes leads us down the wrong way. Our thoughts, Father God, that sometimes allows us to be out of alignment with you. Take away those thoughts, those deeds, those actions that are not of you, Father God, and just cleanse us. We love you, Father God, and it's in Jesus' name that we pray and say amen, amen, and amen. So that's it for me this morning. Thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate you all. I hope that you are using your journal. I hope that you are writing. I hope that what I'm saying to you, you are really taking it into consideration. I'm excited tomorrow to hear what are some of your dreams and your goals. And you know, every challenge I give you or every question I ask you, I also do it, do it for me. And tomorrow I'll share with you what are my some of my dreams and goals because some of them are so big and just out there, just, just out there. But again, I'm a risk taker. I dream big and I, and I, I do it all. I do it all. And I fail all. I fail a lot. But it's okay. Because where I fail, I recognize where I fail. And then I try something different. Nothing stops me. Nothing. Not even money. It don't stop me. I never allow money to be the reason where I, why I don't do something. I try and figure out a workaround. I may even barter. Listen, I, this is what I want to do, and I don't have the money, but how can we work together so I give you something in return for what I want from you? And then when I start to make some money, you best believe I'm going to come back and say, hey, you know what? You helped me out in a, in a certain, in a, at a time when I needed you. Here's some money. Don't wait and allow money to be the reason why you don't move. Don't wait and allow money to be the reason why you procrastinate, the reason why you have fear. See, a lot of us who use money as the crutch for us to not do certain things have a lack mentality, a limited mindset. There's always a workaround. Always. Exchange your services for somebody, something that somebody else has. Now, a lot of entrepreneurs will tell you, I need to get paid what I'm worth. And yes, I totally agree with that. I totally agree with that. But you never know. You may ask the question and say, hey, this is what I can offer you right now for us to work together. Let's go into some kind of partnership. And if it's a case where money is going to be exchanged down the road, you sign a contract. And say, this is what I'll do 12 months from now, six months from now, three months from now. Exchange services. Don't allow money to be the reason why you don't do anything. That is a lack mentality, right? We can all, we always have a work. God always provides a ram in the bush. There is always a way out of no way. He always makes a way. He always provides that ram in that bush. Hallelujah. You just have to take an action. You just have to pick up the phone. Violet Stevens is on with me this morning. I hope she's still here. I'm going to tell you something about me and Violet. I met Violet about two years ago at a retreat. The same young lady that I said, is my, said I'm her spirit annual. I met Violet about two years ago at a retreat. I instantly fell in love with her. She was just absolutely amazing. She was with my Mag 7 sister, who was her coach, right? And so not too long ago, earlier last, later last year, I recognized that Violet was doing something amazing. She was making candles and selling candles um, for her business. Duh, 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 duh. God just prompted me. He said, reach out to Violet and make a partnership with Violet so that you can sell candles for your business, right? reached out to Violet. This is not something that Violet has ever done. Her candle business is for her business. But guess what? I reached out and I asked her, what would it, what would it look like if you custom make some candles for me? 
nothing um, she's ever done before. But guess what? She jumped on it. We did a non-disclosure. We did a contract. And the next thing you know, the Limitless Lifestyle Method has its own candle with its own signature scent that I now sell for $15. That's a plug. If you want one of those, unbelievable partnership. I thought because of something she posted. She made a post and something just like ding, 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 ding. And the next thing you know, she's creating custom scented candles for me so I can sell in my business. She made money, I made money. That's what I'm talking about. Nothing stops me. I am a risk taker. Violet is on. She said God's plan. Amen. May we make her miracle worker, promise keeper, and light in the darkness. Amen. Yes, that is who God is. We make her miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. That is who God is. Trust me when I tell you, you only have to make a move. That's it. That is all he requires, you taking action. He shows you the door, but he will not open the door for you. You got to go touch the knob, pull it open for yourself. And beyond the door is all of your abundance. Beyond the door is your blessing. The blessing is in the surrender. The blessing is in the movement. The blessing is in the action that you take. And I am here this month to help you take the action. The actions that you have been sitting on for years, it's time you move. You got to wake up. You got to get up. Playtime is over. Come on, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for you to move. It's time for you to stop wishing that you had done it and just do it. Just do it. All right? So I'll see you tomorrow morning. I know I ran over my time and I'm so sorry, but I'll see you tomorrow morning, same time, 7.30 in the group. If you know of someone that will benefit from what we're doing, because we're going on a journal journey together, right? We're on this journey. And I want to make sure you guys are writing, writing. Feel the pen between your fingers and write. Day one, who am I? Day two, what do I love about myself? Day three, what are my dreams and goals? I'm going somewhere with all of these questions that I'm asking you. All right? God bless you. Have a wonderful day. And I'll see you tomorrow morning, same time, same place at 730. I love you all. Thank you so much for being on this journey with me. Good morning, cuz, Sharon. You got to go back and watch the replay. <laughs> all right. God bless you. Thank you.